I'm back. Are you able to see what I am sharing? Let's reshare again. I'm not sure if I've shared correctly. Back. We are back. I'm back. Yeah, we can see now. All right. Okay, so we left on uh, question four. So now we are on question five. So question five is normal distribution. It says, given a normally distributed population with the mean of seven and the standard deviation of three and 50 as the number of cases, answer the following question. What is the proportion of participants with a row score of greater than five? So it means bigger than. How did you answer this? Remember, you need to use the Z formula. Z of greater than X minus the mean divide by the standard deviation. How did you answer it? Z greater than? The X is always given in the question. So our X is five. Minus the mean is seven. Mm -hmm. Did you guys answer the question, please? Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> Divide by three. Mm. I don't even know whether I must put the equal sign. Because there's no need for equal signs. So the answer we get is Z of. 5 minus 7. It's minus 2, minus two over 3. Divided by 3. Minus 2 over 3, which is? Z of greater than? What is minus 2 over 3? I got 0 0.667. Okay, remember, you will need two decimals. So it will be 0 0.67. 0 0.67. Now you need to go to the table. But before we go to the table as well, so let's go there. Remember, this is very useful. So we need to make sure that we know what we want to get. So our answer is negative. Or before we go to, the, let's go back there. Uh, I'm going to draw it here. And then I'm going to erase it. So remember, our normal distribution, the answer is negative. Why am I having it as positive? It's minus. This answer should minus. be a negative. Yes, is minus Z of greater than minus zero comma six seven. So seven. It, yeah, it is minus zero comma seven. The yes. sign says greater than, so it means the sign tells us that we need to divide this and shade this area because it says greater than. So. Looking at the sign and the shaded area, therefore it means our answer will be in there. The larger. larger portion. The larger portion. portion. So we need to go to the larger portion and look for 0, 0,67. 67. 
We make this table bigger, not that too big. Zero comma six seven. It is here, and the larger portion that is the answer. So our answer for the proportion is zero comma seven four seven four eight, eight five seven. So the proportion here, yeah, we can write it as zero p of z greater than minus zero comma six seven six seven is equals to zero comma seven four seven four eight five seven eight five seven and that is how you will answer it because i'm gonna run out of space i'm going to delete this or maybe i should leave it no i'm gonna delete it even though it's gonna take me forever delete And number two, 5.2 says we need to find the percentage. So it means the proportion that we're going to find, we need to multiply that by 100. So let's go. We do the same thing, but here it's greater than 15. Eh? So I'm not going to repeat the formula. You can repeat the formula if you want. I'm just going to substitute the values. Z of greater than 15 minus 7. 7 so that will be Z of. What is 15 minus 7? It's 8 divided by 3. 8 divided by 3. Z. <laughs> Leave it to this one. Two point six seven. Two point point six seven. Okay. So we're going to do the same. We're going to draw our normal distribution. And we're going to highlight where our 2.67 is in the positive. Remember, in the middle, there is zero now, so it means it's in the, the side. 2.67. So since it's 2.67 and the sign says greater than, so the shaded area will be the side to the right. So in this side, it is the smaller portion, isn't it? Because the larger portion is not shaded. So we go to the table, we look for 2.67. Once we are on the twos and 2.67 is here. And the answer is 0. Point Nine nine six two one. No, so I've been looking for the smaller portion. Oh, sorry, portion. I went to the wrong side. We are looking mm. for the smaller portion. Portion, which is not this, which is this. Zero point zero zero point seven nine. Zero. Three seven nine. So we can say write it here. <clears throat> the probability of finding Z of greater than two point six seven is zero comma zero. Zero three seven nine. Oh, my pen is not writing. Wait, I don't know what it's doing. 
0379. Remember, they said percentage. Mm. Multiply the answer by 100. And the answer that we have is... Will be equals to zero point uh -uh. Mm -hmm. I got zero point three eight percent zero point three seven nine. I got zero point three eight. Zero point three eight. Yeah. Let's leave it at decimals. We can just leave it at two decimal. We can say it's zero point three eight percent. Remember mm -hmm. to put the percentage there. Mm. Okay, so the next one it says. What is the number of participants that goes between uh, 5 and 19? So it means we're looking for those who's got between 5 and 15, not 19. Why am I saying 19? Uh, 15. So if we convert this, we already calculated the Z scores. So we know what Z scores are. So we know. I'm not going to repeat all those Z scores and do the calculations. We know this site, it was 0, 0.67 and this site is 0, comma, not 0, it's 2. 2.67. 2.67. We're looking for this part. The middle this part. part. So we can use mean to z. Anyway, it's two marks. So uh, we're looking for the number. So I can just go and find the proportion of the z that lies between minus 0 0.67 and 2.67. Remember, we can use the mean to z, add them together. Mean to z for 0 0.67 seven and mean to z for 2.67 and add them together i'm gonna start with this one we know what those are uh, sorry mean to z that is the value we want which is 0 0.49621 uh did you write that down that is for 2.7 2.67 Come back here. Just give it some time. It will pop up. I'm going to say plus 0 0.49621. 9621. And we can go and look for 6.7. Z. It is 0 0.24857. Zero point two four eight five seven. Zero point two four eight five seven. Add them together. Hmm. Zero point seven four four seven eight. Slowly zero point, point seven point seven four four seven eight. Seven eight. Okay, we're done. We're looking for the number. Multiply this value taking that overall number of cases that we have 
and our number of participants. With the raw score between that and that will be. And remember, these are number of participants, so it should be whole numbers as well. So when you get to the answer, remember to leave it as a whole number. So point seven four four seven eight multiply by fifty. Thirty-seven point two three rounded off to thirty-seven. Yeah, yeah, only thirty-seven people. We've got between. Uh, who has the score between five and fifteen? Great news! The other falls outside of that. <clears throat> so that is for two marks. Just to do that. Okay. So, can I ask? Is, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't find the mean to z, but I added the, um, the, the the what you call it. I got either the two values, the ones that I got for two point six seven and the one for, and I got the same number. Is would it be wrong? You added. I added uh, the value that I got for 0 0.67 no. and the value that I got for 2.67. Did you add or subtract because you needed to subtract? I added. Which, which value are you referring to? I added then that then I got the same number that we got when it did the mean to Z. Yeah, I'm asking which number did you add? Zero oh, comma seven. I added zero five. point zero zero three seven nine and zero point. What was the other one? No, oh, zero point seven four eight five. Yes, and then and zero point zero three seven nine. Yes. Then I got zero point seven four four seven eight. You can get 0 0.74478 if you added both of them. You should have subtracted to get that. Because the other one is 0.74857. Already it's more than 0 0.774. Because if you say plus 0 0.00379, we get. 0 0.7524. You're not, a, not going to get 0 0.74478. Mm. I don't know how I got it. I don't know how I got it, but I didn't add the mean to Z. But I got the same number that you got. Now I'm just trying to find out what I did. You subtracted. Huh? Yes, you subtracted uh, the two numbers. One oh, yes, the... I subtracted. Yes, I did subtract. Yes, um, I did subtract. I think, yes, I think you're using the same method that I I used in class. Yes. Yes. So it will give you the same. So if you take the probability there minus the probability, there you should get the same answer. Uh, but I don't know how your your lecture marks, so please make sure that you use the mean. To, try to use the mean to z, if possible. Otherwise, you must show how you calculated the value so that then they are able to follow what you did to get to the answer. Okay. You don't lose marks. Okay, so question number six. You have 10 golf balls in the basket. Four are yellow, six are white. You take out two balls from the basket, one by one without replacement. So it means the minute you took out the first one, you're not going to put it back. So it means the count 
from 10 becomes 9 the second time you go back in the back. What is the probability that the first ball taken out is yellow and the second is white? Hmm? We have 10 go for us in our basket. So how did you calculate it? So I said the probability that the first ball is yellow is 4 divided by 10, which is 0, 0,4. Okay. And so white is, there are now nine balls left. So for white is six divided by nine, which is equals to zero comma six six seven. That's what I got. Yeah, me too. I also got the same. Uh, probability of first yellow. Would be. <clears throat> four out of 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the probability of white and white, you said six out of nine. And what is four over ten? Not point four. And then six seven nine. Four, six seven nine is not point six seven. Uh, I think you need to, because it says end. <laughs> uh, because it says end, Therefore, oh, we're not supposed to multiply. We need to multiply. Yes, we need yes. to. We need to multiply. <laughs> so we can just say the answer would be, and let's say <clears throat> probability. To write it as such, probability of yellow and and white will be 4 over 10 multiplied by 6 over 9. Uh, right. What you get? Mm. 0.264 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.7, which gives you... Zero point two seven. Zero point mm. two seven. Two six so eight much. or two point seven if you round off, yeah. Yes, let's leave it at two decibels. Okay. Mm. That is six point one, six point two. Your angle has five golf balls, two are black, three are yellow. What is the probability that the first ball he takes out will be black? Um. <sighs> Mm 
also call it first black. What is the probability of first black? Two out of five balls. And that is how much? Five. Um, 0 0.4. 0 0.4. 0 0.4. You and your uncle decided to throw all the balls you have into one basket. Are we still referring to the first one? I don't know, but I think we're still referring to that. Mm. I think so. <laughs> <clears throat> what is the probability that the first ball he takes out will be yellow? Mm. Oh, so we, this... uh, ignore <laughs> the first statement, which is 6.2, because they say they throw all the balls, balls back into one basket. One basket is... Okay, yeah. but then I, I was this question confused me these yellow balls that uncle has are they his own or are they part of mine they're his own isn't it? you and your uncle decide to throw all the balls you have into one basket so your uncle has three yellow plus my four yellow makes it seven yellow yes your uncle your yes your uncle have five but you have ten remember mm -hmm. Very careful here. Hmm? But then now there is what there is. So it means there are now seven yellow balls. You need yes. yes. Wait, let me write this first. First yellow. So now you need to add both of them because you and your uncle threw all your balls into one basket. So now you have. 10 plus 5, which is our 15. Yes, I'm just going to write here at the bottom, 15. So how many yellows are there? 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. So we can say yes, it's 7 plus 4 is 7 over 15, which means it's how much? Um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, what they ask on the previous exam paper asking you uh, to calculate if you win a prize or you have a prize A B, and then A wins a prize, 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 Okay. Yes, those are those are better. This one was a bit tricky. Yeah. Oh. Let's move on to question seven. A personnel officer of an organization. Organization one to this to determine whether there is a difference between the productivity of employees from two departments in an organization. <clears throat> you choose two groups consisting of 31 employees from each department. The productivity of employees from each department is measured in terms of average unit produced per work day in a month. In order to draw conclusion, you need to determine whether there is a significant difference between Department A productivity score and those of Department B. At level of significance is set at alpha of 0, 0,05. OK. 
Okay. Formulate the appropriate null hypothesis in symbol. Null hypothesis. Null hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Mean A minus mean B is equals to zero. Is not equals to. Is it not? No, null hypothesis. Mean A minus mean B is equals to zero. B is equals to zero. And that's. Oh, or you can answer it. Oh, come on. Sorry. Null hypothesis. No, wait, sorry, I'm not picking A. Yeah, wait. Sorry. Let me fix my phone. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything on this phone without opening those. Okay. So. Or you, if you don't put it this way, or you can say H not mean, mean A, A is equal to mean B. Mean B. That is in symbol your null hypothesis. Formulate the appropriate alternative hypothesis in weights. The productivity in department A is not the same as the productivity of employers in department B. Uh -uh. Uh, I said there is a difference in the productivity of employees from two departments in the organization. There we go. You use that statement in your alternative hypothesis. Oh, okay. I notice it. There is a difference and blah, 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 blah. This is that statement. But now you cannot just say there is a difference in productivity. You need to say there, uh, yes, you can say that. Or you can say between the mean of department A scores and the mean of department B scores, because we're talking about the means as well. So you can you can say it that way. But even if you repeat the same statement as they have it there, um, but you will need to some way to have scores so that it makes difference or the mean score or something like that. Okay, uh, 7.3, assume that the data are normally distributed. Select the appropriate test statistic and calculate. So, what the statistic? So, we have equal number of observations. So, it should be easy. When we have equal number of observations, also we can use T. The T square, T test. The T test. And the formula. So if you go back to your formulas, if you don't know which formulas to use, these are the formulas. This one is the t-test for the differences where you the before and after. So it means when you, you give it. Well, Sorry. When you are given the same, like the mean score before the test and after the test, you use that. Uh, for independence, when you have equal sample 
sample sizes and independence when you have unequal. I don't know how to write unequal. How possible? Because I just finished writing equal. Unequal sample sizes. So let's go back there. Do we have equal sample sizes? Yes. So which formula are you going to use? This formula. So did you write it down? Yes. Okay. Yes. So which is the mean for A minus the mean for B divide by the square root of I forgot now. I need to go and double check. Is it S squared? S squared for A divide by N A plus S squared A B divide S squared B minus. Is it minus? Divide by. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, it's divide by. It's divide by. Yes. So you can just substitute the values. Sixty-five. 0.64 minus 63.74 divide by the square root of remember they gave you s squared so you don't have to if they just gave you s you're just going to put the square on the values so you just use the values as they are 5.3 Divide by 31 plus 3,74 divide by 31. What do you get? The top is zero comma nine. Zero comma nine. And then the bottom, isn't it? Because the denominators are the same, we just add the numerators. So it'll be 7,27 over 31, which is. Sorry, isn't it 1.9 at the top? What? 0.9. Isn't it 1.9? Yes, 1.9. Is it? Yeah. I go to 1.9. Oh yes, one one point eight nine. My bad. One point eight nine. Is it one point eight nine or one point nine? One point nine. Please. It's one point nine. I also have one point nine. Mm -hmm. um, when you're writing this module, are you using Iris or are you using the Invigilator app? Neither. No, it's a it's it's none of the above. Oh. None of the above. Yes. None of the above. <laughs> All right. It's a two-day thing, so 
Oh. Yeah, how does that Why? work? That it, that it opens on the... 24 hours, yes. Yeah. So yes. They just give you more time to work through. So you can do today and tomorrow. Make sure that you don't run out of time. Yes. Because yeah. they take into consideration the load shading in South Africa. Okay. So you don't complain. That you no, I'm not. I'm just... <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> I was just thinking, do I understand it correctly? Because <laughs> everything yeah. else is a time pressure with three hours and one hour to upload. And oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a lot. See? Yeah. Oh. Okay. 3.53 divided by 31 plus 3.74 divided by 31. The square root one so, the bottom part those who calculated what do you get do you get 0 0.48 i had level i don't know whether i did it right i mean after you take away the square root as well and some digits um if you have a, a case your calculator, you can use the fraction oh. the fraction thingy to calculate this because it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. So I will send you guys my calculator on my phone. Some of you might have those who don't have, it has a fraction calculation thingy that you can use to answer the question without doing step by step. I am going to do that so that we can compare our answers. Minus 3.74 divided by this square of 3.53 divided by 31. Yes. And the answer I get is three point nine two. What do you get? Three point nine two. Three point nine two. You also get 3.92. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is the answer to that question. <laughs> and it's for three marks. Determine the degrees of freedom. I've shared the calculator on the group. You, you have shared the calculator. On, yeah, the so they can download the calculator that the one you're talking about. I have it on my phone as well. Okay, okay thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so somebody in there, either the, the TV or the people in the background, about nan 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 nani nani. Uh, okay, so let's move to the next question. It says, find the degrees of freedom. Oh, sorry. 
So this belongs to that and this belongs to that. So our degrees of freedom for this is N1 plus N2 minus 2. Degrees of freedom and N A plus N B minus 2, which is 31. Plus 31 minus, minus two, which is equals to 60, 60 right? 60. That is your degrees of freedom. Determine the critical value. Uh, <coughs> the Sorry, Liz, can you just go back to your formula sheet where you're saying this one belongs with this one and this one? Uh, C, okay. And also this one is saying degrees of freedom. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, two-tail test. Significant value of alpha of 0, 0,05. So, go to the table. We look for T table, which is this table. We're looking for a two-tail of 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom of 60. Let's scroll down. So here is the degrees of freedom. So since 0, 0,05 is right here, I'm going to highlight the column since I'm scrolling down. And your critical value. Let's go back for those who still don't remember. They said critical value two tail table, uh, two tail test at 5%, which is 0, 0,05. Two tail test 0, 0,05. Degrees of freedom of 60, we calculated that. Where they both meet, that is our critical value, which is. 2.0003 T of 0, 0,05 critical value is I forgot now 2.2.0003 for one month. Interpret the results in terms of the rejection area. So we know the critical value. We have the test statistic. Interpret your results. So it's a two tail test. You know, I like to do like this. And because it's a two tail test, shade the side and also shade the side. And call this minus 2.003 and the side. 2.0003. So wherever the T the T test statistic that we calculated here, we if it falls in the shaded area, or oh remember I like to also mention that this is the this is the decision rule. Yes, it's just that this is just a, a diagram to help us make the decision here yeah, for a two-tail test. So we go to say where does this value fall? If it falls in the shaded area, we reject the null hypothesis. Also here, yeah, we reject the null hypothesis. So where does it fall? 3.92 falls in the rejection area. So interpret your results. What did you say when you interpreted your results? Is it not high? 
I said 3.92 is greater than 2.0003, so therefore reject the hypothesis. The test of 3.92 is greater than the critical value of 2.0003 the four we reject the null hypothesis. I'm gonna call it H naught, but you can use the full width. We reject the null hypothesis. That is all what you need to do because the next question says interpret your rejection in relation to the statement in your in a plain language and also state the certainty we have done this so if we are rejecting the null hypothesis our null hypothesis said there are there is so there's no difference hi the yes there is no difference between those mean we reject that so therefore if we are rejecting that therefore it means the alternative hypothesis statement is true so how do you interpret this in your plain language using the also including the uncertainty and remember the level is 95 so the 95 your level of significance is five percent so the certainty will be 95. 95. 95. So state that in the whole sentence. Using the information we just stated, so you can take the whole statement actually don't take that one use this one at the bottom use this statement in your answer plus also include a 95 percent say to need hi i don't know if also know how to spell certainty here now why am i having all this eyes say t I'm not going to write anymore. You guys sort that out. So. You can write that. In your play language. So you can say there is a 95% certainty that there is oh that there is a significant difference between department A productivity score and those of department B or you can say there is a significant difference between department A productivity score and those of department B with a 95% certainty Whichever way to choose to use, use them. As long as the statement will read with that. And there is some sort of significance that you, you state as well. So it should be that statement, the whole of it. Okay, happiness? Yes, happy. Yes. Okay. Then we move on to question eight. It is an ANOVA question. I'm not going to read the statement. Given the table with all the information, 
Um, the lecture have asked you to help answer the following question. Is there a significant difference in the student's attitude towards statistics at first, second, and third level? Um, I think this is similar to the almost the same question that we did previously. So it should be easy to answer or you should have the answers to this question because it's almost exactly the same. The only difference probably would be that I can think of would be the values given. Yeah, they change the values. They, ju they just change the values, but the questioning is almost exactly the same. So what is 8.1? Choose the, an appropriate test statistics to this hypothesis question and calculate the test statistic. Present your answer in a summary table. So remember, you will need to go and calculate. I'm going to, I need to give you all the formulas and then you do the calculation and complete the table. I will come back because my kids are not sleeping and they should be sleeping by now. So. You need to first calculate your SST, which is your sum of X squared minus the sum of X squared divided by N. You need to calculate that and get it right. And then you need to also calculate the SS group, SS group, which is your small N times the sum of, and all these are formulas given on, uh, yeah, are all this. This information is what you need to, to get for eight marks. So we need to calculate all of them. So it is the sum of your sum of your X mean J, which is for individual groups, minus the overall mean, which is, I always like to put the X bar, X bar on top, the overall mean, and I think we need squared. Yes, I thought I know the formulas by heart. Unfortunately not. That you need to calculate, you need to calculate SS group. Then you need to calculate SSE, SSE, which is SST minus SS group, which are those two values. You subtract one from the other. And then you also need to find your degrees of freedom. I'm going to follow the same thing that we did the previous one. So you need to find the degrees of freedom for total. Degrees of freedom. For total. Um, you must look at the formula. So which is capital letter N. Minus one. You need to find the degrees of freedom for group, which is your K minus one. And you need to go and find your degrees of freedom for error. which is k n minus one k n minus one and that is the small n and once you have all that information you need to go and calculate uh let me put this line here then you will need to calculate your ms ms group if you haven't calculated them, MS group by 
substituting SS group divided by the degrees of freedom for group. And then you need to also calculate uh, MS error, MSE or error, which you will use SSE divide by the degrees of freedom. So you would use the value you find on the SSE divided by degrees of freedom error. And once you are done, then you can calculate your F test statistic, which is your MS group divide by your MS error. And once you have that, then you can draw your table. Uh, I might not have enough space, but you will need to draw your table. Uh, oh, yeah, what am I doing? Okay. I've ran out of space. I will come back and draw the table, but if you able to draw the table, let me know. And uh, just give me five minutes. I will be back. I uh, just need to check what these kids are doing.
Siellä on lappu. Siellä on lappu. Joo, ei vaan ole sen tuon jälkeen Aku nak nak dia lah. Mungkin yang zaman ni aku tu. Okay. Are we are we done? Are we somewhere? Let's uh let's populate. Let's populate the. Venus. Back, and then we'll draw the table later on. So SST. SST is one nine one five minus. Two thirty five squared divided right. by thirty, which is fifty five. Two thirty five. Oh, yes. eh? I think I also used the wrong N. I need to get it right and use the capital letter N. Divide by thirty. Yes, divide by thirty. And it's and it's two two five, eh? not three two five squared. It's two. Two, three, five. Yeah. Two, three, five squared. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the answer you got was? Um, one, nine, one, five minus five. 55, two, two, five. Is that the answer you got? No, no. No, no, the answer is 74.17. Yeah. The answer is 74. Yes, I got 74.17. Yeah. Okay. And the SS group, we use 10. Mm -hmm. And we say. Right edge. I'm just doing a bigger bracket. And we're going to say um, 6.5 minus, minus 7.83 bracket squared plus, plus 10, 8, 10 bracket. Where did you get 10? Oh, no? oh sorry, it's by the way, the bigger bracket. Bracket 8. eight. Mm. Wait, let me raise that and, and write it again. 8 minus 783 squared plus the last one. 9. 7.83 squared. And what is the answer? I'm interested in the final answer. Thirty-one point six seven. Thirty-one point six seven. Point six seven. And SSE will be SST, which is seventy-four. Point one seven minus eighty one point six seven. What do you get? Forty two point five. Forty two point five oh. Okay. And degrees of freedoms. It should be 30 minus 1. 30 minus 1, yes, yeah, 29. 
which is 29. I can just come here and calculate this one as well, which is 31.67 divided by 29. And the answer you get is See, I got fifteen point eight three four. Fifteen point three eight four. Eight three. 15.834. So I can leave it as 15.83. And you can do SS degrees of free. Ah, sorry, you guys. I've sorry, my bad. You're not even saying you substituting wrong. That is SS total. That won't be correct. Okay. Mm, Pay attention yeah. to the values used. Don't just accept. It's, it's ten o'clock at night. Our brains freeze sometimes. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the groups case. How many groups do we have? There are three groups. Three. And three minus one, which makes it equals two. Two, so it means so, this yeah. value will divide by two, and that will be Thirty one point six seven divided by two. Two. Fifteen point eight. point eight. Yeah. Three. Eight. 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 MSE, we need the degrees of freedom. So we know that this is three times small n is 10, 10 minus, one. minus one, which is plus two. Nine, Nine three. times three? 27. 27. So we can then substitute. Our SSE is for the C point five zero divided by twenty seven. And what do you get? I got one point five seven. Seven. One point five seven. Yes. Now let's Substitute fifteen point eight three divide by one point five seven. What do you get? <coughs> While you be getting all that. I'm just going to draw the table here because I don't have another space to draw the table. I hope I know it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Let's go find another spot. In the meantime, what is the answer to 10.09? And point zero nine. 
happiness. Now let's draw the table. I got 10.08. I also get 10.08. Okay. Oh, it's about 8 cents. This one is 0 0.8. Oh, no, I'm going to draw the table here. So you would have your source, your release of freedom, your SSS, your MS, and F. your F, which is your test statistic. So since we calculated everything on there, so I'm just going to substitute the values. F, uh, I'm not sure if they want you to write the formulas, so you can say. MSG over for some reason now my pen is erasing. Why, why, why? F MSG over MSE. I'm not going to write all the values. I'm just going to substitute 0 0.8 and your M S E is equals to. Otherwise, you don't even have to repeat all these titles. I was going to ask you, do we have to repeat the formulas in in the table? Not really. Look at what your example from your book. The book uh, just says, gives the values, no the values, formulas. Yeah. You just put the yeah. formula, the SS, values. Yeah, just put the values. So thirty one point six seven. 31.67. This one is 15.83. And the other one is 1.57. 1.57. So here you can say, I don't know whether you use group or treatment. It's group. You can say that yeah. group. Error. And then they error, and then they is total. Total. And your degrees of freedoms. Of two. SS2 is forty two point five zero. Mm -hmm. And then two and twenty seven. Two. Mm -hmm and 27 and then this will be 29 and here you can also have the total you just add this to values 7 11 point 7. and here you can do the same you can add all of them i don't know whether you do add them but you can add them so that will be zero Eighteen five plus six seven seventeen point three oh, and that is the table for eight max. That's all what they want. But you can show also all the calculations that you need in case a table with is worth one mark. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> a, lot, yeah. a lot of work for.
Yes, Personal. because in order for you to find the test statistics, you need to calculate all this. And then they also say present your answers in the summary table, which is the summary table. And all of it, it's eight bytes. Okay, so 8.2. Determine the critical value. So in terms of the critical value, we need to use the degrees of freedom for the Group and, group and, error. and error. Yes, so we can use degrees of freedom for one, uh, two, and degrees of freedom for two. this is one for two will be twenty seven, and we're going to use our ANOVA table which is the F table, so F of 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom. So let's go look for the table. And we need to pay attention. 0, 0,01, that's what they want. <coughs> so this will be your DF1 and this will be your DF2. So DF1 is 2 and 27. So we're looking for 2 and 27. What is that? So critical value is 5. <coughs> and that is for one mark. So you must also pay attention to your tables because it's split by degrees of freedom. Uh, sorry, by the level of significance. Okay, so now 8.3. Uh, let's call this 8.1. 8.3, do you reject the null hypothesis? If you look at this distribution, it's left skewed. It doesn't really matter whether we're doing a two-tail test or not. So the decision is if we cross the side of the portion of the graph, we reject the null hypothesis. And remember this, we said it's 5.49, the region of rejection. Anything this side, we reject the null hypothesis. So let's go to our critical value. We found that it was 10.8. So, so it will be in the rejection area. Mm. So what do you say? You say F that I'm just going to use F statistic is equals to 10.08, which is greater than your F of 0, 0,01, which is your critical value of 5.49 therefore we reject the null hypothesis <clears throat> f test statistics is greater than your critical value we therefore reject the null hypothesis that will give you one mark to state this sentence like that. 8.4, interpret your results. Remember, we interpret it based on the information. The information, th is there a significant difference? Remember, he said there is no difference. We are rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, it means to say there is a difference. So. Mm. Same as what we did previously. Also remember with certainty. And because it's 0, 0,01, what is our certainty value percentage? 99%. We're so going to say with 99% certainty, there is no, uh -uh, there is a significant difference. And the attitude. Just repeat it. 
Sorry, in the attitude of students, there is a significant difference in the attitude of students towards statistics at first, second, and third year level. This can be concluded with 99% certainty. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And that will give you two marks. As long as you can mention 99 and you can refer back to that statement, you get two marks for that. Right. I think we are almost at the end, which is chi square test. So they've given you a contingency table with gender and yes, no, and not sure. So it's a two by three table. And I think it's almost similar to the one that you had previously as well that we went through. So they also calculated your chi-square test statistic, which they found that it was 51.39. Make a contingency table to represent the given information and clearly indicate your observed and your expected. Remember, I said you can also from here, you can also say identify your observed and your expected in a bracket, or you can create a table on the side similar to the same. And but you will need to have totals first before you do that, because you need totals. So. Let's first calculate the totals. So you need to calculate totals. So you will have. Totals and you will have. Totals they. So this is 45, this is 40, 40 and 15, and 15, and going aside, <coughs> 5 it's plus 50, is 50, 50, and 50, and this is 50, and the total will be 100. 100. Okay, so Remember, in order for you to calculate the expected value, so let's say we want to calculate the expected value for five. We say the row total, which is 50, multiply by the column total, which is 45. 45. And remember, this is only the remarks, but you have to do, do it that way. Uh, divide by... <coughs> Hundred. I'm gonna get you the views just now. Twenty-two point five, I think. Twenty-two point. Twenty-two point five. I will write them just now. Just Okay, so for five, 
it's 22.5 <laughs> and this is 22.5 and <laughs> the middle one is 20 and 20, 20 and this will be 20 and this will be 20 so you can put this in bracket in bracket bracket and I think this is 7.5. 7.5. So that will be your observed and your expected in brackets. Okay. Because they say clearly indicate your observed and your expected. So once you redraw this <coughs> table, just say somewhat. Oh, I, I think you can write it here. Say ob observed and expected in bracket you can just do it like that then they will understand what you have done okay. it's only three marks anyway okay so once that is done the next one says find the degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom here is your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Don't count the headers, don't count the totals. So how many rows? These are the rows. Two. There are only two of them. Two minus one. And how many columns? And these are columns. Three. And there are three columns minus one. Which is two minus one is two. Uh, it cannot be two, one. it's one, and three minus two, three minus, three one, minus two. one is two. is two, I'm already giving you the answer, which is equals to two, and that is for one mark. The next <coughs> one, the critical value, so our chi-squared critical value, it's 0, 0,01 and your degrees of freedom of 2. Mm. And the degrees of freedom of 2. So we go to the table. So every time you hear critical value, always remember to go to the table. table. So we're using 0, 0,01, so that is 0, 0,01, and 2, and your critical value is 2, comma, uh, it's 9, comma, 2, 1, 0, 4. 9, comma, 2, 1, 0, 4. And that is... And do we reject the null hypothesis? Also, remember this. If it falls here, decision rule, we reject the null hypothesis. So we know that this region of rejection is 9.21. <coughs> what did we get? The test statistic is 51.39. So since the chi square test statistic is equals to 51.39, which is greater than the critical value of nine point two one zero four. We reject the null hypothesis and the last bit interpret your results and with how much certainty so the same Anyone who wants to try it for the last time because this is the end. Okay. 
<clears throat> How would you answer it? Jesus. Let me try. Okay. Okay, sorry, go ahead. No, you can go, Karen. It's fine. Um, I would say there is a significant difference between South African men and women in terms of compliance with a lockdown regulations, and that this can be said with 99% certainty. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> and all the best with your exams. Any questions? Oh, no, just a huge thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I would have done without you in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> More like in our brain at this point. Trust me, it's not really in your pocket. <laughs> when, when are you writing? Uh, 30 the to the will, Yeah, the paper mm. will be released at quarter to six <laughs> in, the, Tuesday. in the evening. Yeah. Oh, on Tuesday. Okay. Yes. Yes. Tuesday yeah. to Wednesday. If, if your exam is almost the same as the two papers that we just went through, I don't see any problem. Oh, just to remember nice. all these things that's so easy with you. <laughs> you see, like you make everything too easy. It seems so easy and you're looking at a paper. I mean, I, I tried to do this paper and in four hours I had only done half of it. So... <laughs> Yeah. You see, most of these things that you do in this paper, they are in your study guide, probably. Mm. I've, yeah. I've done the whole study guide, trust me. Still, you, when you open a question paper, it feels like it's different. I don't it's know. It's yeah. just me. Yeah. I mean, it's, okay. it's like that, it's that level of confidence. You don't even know where to start. It's like, oh, where do I start? Exactly. What formula <laughs> is this? <laughs> So yeah. I've taken out my, I've, my, on my formula sheet, I've written what they are and what chapter they're from. That way, oh. I've, I don't know, it sort of makes it a bit easy, but still, you, I, we needed this, trust me. It's, yeah. It's, um, yeah. Let me thank you so much. Question. Yes. So 